Hello everyone and welcome to or welcome back to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie. I am Knit California here on YouTube and also on Instagram and this is episode number 16. Today we have a regular podcast episode and I have sort of, almost, um, a really exciting finished object to show you. Um, I am wearing today my dive tee from We Are Knitters in the We Are Knitters Pima Cotton. Um, it's been like, weather-wise, we've been having like cold mornings, but then it always gets up into like the 70s in the afternoon, so um, I start off in like a little bit of knitwear and then usually have to change out of it as the day goes on, but um, it is warm slash cold enough to wear a short sleeve cotton shirt, so that's where we're at today. Um, but I know that is not as exciting as my sort of almost finished object, so Let's get into it. Da, 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 da. See if I can show you all of it. It's my Oslo sweater. And it's almost sort of done. Um, and I say almost sort of done. And like the reason I'm not wearing it is because there are a couple things that need to be fixed. And I wanted to film before I make those changes so that I can kind of show you a before and after. Um, next week you'll see what it looks like after as it's completely done and blocked and hopefully I'll be wearing it. So that's why it's not on. Um, I'll just put a picture over here the whole time I'm talking about it so you can see what I mean. Um, but first of all, I'm very happy to be done with almost all of the knitting. Um, this is, I didn't say, this is the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit, and the yarn that I'm using is Sorella Yarn, Stellina, and Mohair held together, both in the colorway Folklore uh, from the Taylor Swift collection, which I've been joking that maybe I should just call it Lavender Haze because uh, that's the name of one of the new songs on the new album. So, anyways, it looks so good. Um, okay, so what we need to change. I don't know if you can tell. You can probably see it in the photo. Um, the body is way too long. I knit this, I knit the body at least, exactly to pattern. Um, I knit the sleeves almost exactly to pattern, but when I was picking up in the round, I ended up picking up fewer stitches than were called for for the size that I was making. Um, so I had to do a little bit of modification there, but that's like my fault and not the pattern's fault, so oh, whatever. Um, but I knit the body exactly to pattern, and I didn't try it on at all. I just... <laughs> Like I got to the end of the stockinette and the ribbing was supposed to be starting and I had the thought, you should try this on. And then I said, mm, I'm not really feeling it. I think I was like sitting in bed, being all cozy, knitting with a TV show and uh, I just never tried it on. So I knit this thick, like three inch one by one ribbing hem and it's too, it's too long, it's too big. So, my plan, I'm a little scared, but I've seen other people do this, specifically Whitney uh, from the Knitted by Whitney podcast. She knit a sugar plum jumper, I believe is the name of it. It's this gorgeous hot pink sweater, and it was knit bottom up, and she knit it to pattern, and it ended up being way too big, both the body and the sleeves, and so she did this, where she cut it, and then Kitchener stitched it back together. So that's what I'm planning on doing. I am going to, somewhere down here, see if I can hold this up. 
somewhere in this area, I need to take about four inches out. Um, when I tried it on, I was kind of thinking, I need to take two to four inches out. I'm going to go high. I'm going to take four inches out because I haven't blocked it yet. And so if I take out more length now, pre-blocked, I believe that when I block this, it'll still grow a little bit. Um, so I'm going to attempt... What I'm going to attempt to do is put in a lifeline and put in a second lifeline. Then, so we'll have like two, like this, bloop, cut somewhere in the middle. See if I can frog it, although at this point it doesn't really matter. I don't think this yarn is really going to be usable. So I might need to do like a lot of cutting out all these stitches. But then I'll have two live sections on cords and needles and then I can Kitchener stitch back together. Now I think the one thing I just want to make sure, I will want to make sure that the tension is good um, and like consistent throughout as I'm doing this so that's one thing that I'm nervous about but if it ends up not working out I think I'll keep like a lifeline in uh, like the upper section I'll keep another second lifeline in so that if the kitchen doesn't work out I can just like rip everything out and re-knit the ribbing if I need to um, I have I wanted to show you all the yarn that I have left over so I have all of this yarn left over so I'm not worried about running out of yarn this was the fourth skein. I bought four skeins of Selena and four skeins of mohair for this. The other three <laughs> I've got little scraps of um, and I just like they it kind of worked out where like as I finished the body I was like finishing a skein and so I just started a new one. So both this well sort of um, but so like this is what I have left over from the other three skeins. It's scraps, but like I could also make this work if I needed to. It's like deceptively more than it looks like. So, but I mean this is plenty to re-knit three inches of ribbing. So if I need to, I'm going to try not to do that uh, because... Like I've mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of one by one ribbing. So three inches of it was a lot, and I know it'll be a lot the second time around. But I mean, it'll be worth it. The sweater is like really, really gorgeous. I love it. So that's where we're at. That's the biggest thing. And then, so after I do that, then I'm going to block it. Um, and when I block it, just a couple things that I'm really looking to change um, and like make better. The first is just on the sleeve join here. Just want to kind of like stretch this out a little bit so this flattens and like just looks a little bit better. Um, and I think that'll be no problem. Um, and then the other thing is, and I don't think I've shown this at all, but I alternated skeins when knitting this and the method that I used to do that was as I was knitting around the skein that I wasn't using I put the non-working yarn in the front of my work and I knit around and as I got back to that point I would move it to the back and move the yarn that I was using to the front and so this kind of switching motion it's like you can't see where it is in the stitches however I think it was a tension issue you see that big line like it caused this this big line down the side of my sweater and then on the underneath of the sleeves and I'm thinking this should block out or at least make it slightly less noticeable. The sleeves, honestly, I'm not worried about. It kind of just looks like a crease on the bottom of the sleeve. The one on the side, again, I'm also not like too worried about it. It's like right on the side, so it looks like a crease, 
but I just think it'll be nicer if it's like flattened out. So I think blocking will help with a lot of that. I don't know. If you have any experience, let me know. Did blocking help you with this or not? <laughs> um, and then the other piece for blocking is I just want uh, the collar to sit a little bit like lower on my neck. It's a little like choky right now, but I don't think that'll be an issue either. I've always had success with that when blocking in the past. So, and then I did measure where the width and length of my sweater is now. I think width wise, it'll grow a couple inches because let me just give you the numbers. So I'm keeping track of all of this to do the big overall comparison videos. Um, but I knit the size extra large, which in the pattern says that the finished bust measurement should be 51 inches. And where it's at right now is 48 inches. So that's three inches off. Um, theoretically, just thinking, I think I could gain three inches in blocking. The question is, do I want to gain three inches in blocking? Um, I think the circumference of the sweater right now, and this is totally a personal preference, when you're making sweaters, the amount of positive ease is very personal and it's what you feel the most comfortable with so just because I say you know I like 10 inches of positive positive ease or whatever doesn't mean that everyone else will like the same amount okay what I'm trying to do with this experiment also is figure out how much positive ease I do like like what is too much what is too little for kind of this type of sweater that I'm going for I definitely want it to have some positive ease um, if the finished bust measurement is 51 inches that would be about 11 inches of positive ease and that might be a little too much I'm thinking so I might try to block it to 50 inches which would be two additional inches I'm not sure we'll see <laughs> um, but the length of the sweater as well the pattern says it should be 24 and a half inches if you measure the back from right below the collar to the end of the ribbing. Um, mine is measuring 24 inches. So like I said, I knit it exactly to pattern. In fact, it's like, oh, 24.25. So it's like a quarter of an inch too short, but like it still ended up being too long. Again, all of us have different like size and shaped bodies, so my torso is technically shorter than like most most people's proportionally. So I should have known it was going to be too long, but I didn't do anything about it. So we're going to have to fix it. Fix it in post, right? That's what they say in the movie industry. I don't know. Anyways, um, I also think in blocking this, just like the mohair is going to soften up a little bit. It's going to get a little bit drapier, but you can see the halo, right? It's so good. And I haven't had any issues with like the mohair being too itchy for me or anything, so I really am happy with that. Um, yeah. I wanted to talk also, so I've started like writing a list of questions for myself. I want to like take really good notes um, as I'm finishing this sweater so I remember everything about it because I mean I'm sure this happens to you too but like as I move on to the next sweater I'm gonna forget stuff about this sweater and in doing the comparison video I really want to be able to kind of like have the same notes on the same topics for each of the sweaters so I'm making a list of like all the questions that I want to ask myself and all of the different things that I want to compare. 
So I'm going to read this off to you. And if there's anything else that you would add to this list, if you are comparing patterns, um, please let me know in the comments below. Or if there's anything else that you would like to know about these different patterns, leave it in the comments below and I will add it to my notes, okay? So I'm going to ask myself, um, did the sweater come out the same or close to the pattern specifications and measurements? That's why I'm taking, I don't normally like, you know, write down all of the measurements and everything. Um, sometimes I don't even like look back at the pattern specifications, but usually I just go on how it feels, how it looks on my body, like, and that's fine. But again, because I'm doing the comparison, I'm keeping track. So, um, do you like the amount of ease? How was reading the pattern? Were there any tricky parts in knitting this? Were there any annoying parts in knitting this? Is this a beginner friendly pattern? Now I know that's gonna vary depending on who you ask what is considered beginner friendly. So I'll try to define that as best I can. Uh, do you like the yarn choice in general for this project specifically? Um, uh, that's like two questions. Do I like the yarn choice in general? And does it work for this specific pattern? Um, and what's the wearability like? Will How often will you reach for this finished object? And then, so it's kind of like answering questions and then in terms of like actually comparing these, I don't know if I'll make like a table or do like star ratings. I'm not sure, I haven't figured that out yet, but I want to compare the um, number of positive E's the sweater constructions, how reading the pattern is like, if it was an enjoyable experience, the drape slash the gauge, um, see what the differences are there, the wearability, is the pattern size inclusive, and time spent on the patterns. So again, if there's anything else that you would include, please let me know. I would love to add it to my list. I get to make a spreadsheet for all of this, so you know I am loving it. Um, but I will come back next week, and I will hopefully, like I said, be wearing this. It'll be blocked. It'll be fixed. You'll can you'll see what it looks like, kind of a before and after. And I will answer some of these questions about this sweater specifically. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yay! Okay, so the only other knitting that I have to show you is my Oslo hat. And it doesn't really look like much yet. <laughs> There's, that's where we are. Um, this is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. And I am knitting this in red stag fiber. Colorway is Passport. Um trying to think. Is this the BFL yarn? Yeah. This is 100% Superwash British Blue Faced Luster BFL. Um, and it's going well. I mean, this is my straight stockinette knitting. I am seven... One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Seven more rows until I can knit this together for the folded brim. And then it like went pretty fast after I did that. So and it's maybe only like a couple more days of knitting. I mean, I probably could finish it in a day if I really tried, like on a weekend. But I usually reserve my weekends for sweater knitting to get like a big, big chunks done at a time. Um and this is kind of just like sporadic meetings when I need straight stockinette, that sort of thing. So, but it'll be done soon. This part's kind of just like annoying. It's like you're just knitting a tube for 20 centimeters or whatever it is, whatever size you're making. So sometimes it feels like it's never ending, but that's why I put the row counter on so that I can see that I'm making progress. 
and count my rows. I did like, I had 25. What's 25 minus 7? I'm not good at mental math like that. What? I don't know, 15, 18, something like that? I don't know, I did like 15 rows, rounds, while I was in meetings earlier today. So, that was productive and eventful. So, and it felt like I was going fast after I put the row counter on because I didn't have the row counter on before and then I, you know, measured out where I was, I measured out how many rows I needed to get to where I needed to be, I set up my marker, um, I don't, I think I've explained this, but when I'm counting rows on this, um, as I'm like knitting around, I count up, so increasing the numbers, but I use the like extra hook on here to count uh, multiples of 10, so every 10 rounds, and I count down there. So I needed to do 25 rounds, so I set this up where the little extra marker was on the 3, so it kind of counted for 30, but then I started my row counter on row 6. So I finished 5, then I went back to number one, but I moved the counter to the two, so I knew I had 20 rows left. I don't know if that made sense, but... Anyways, this um, was from the Twice Sheared Sheep Mother's Day box, this one specifically. I do have like three others of these that I have purchased with my, my own money, but if you're interested in a row counter, um, as always, the my affiliate link for Twice Your Cheap is in the description below. If you purchase anything after clicking on the link, uh, I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you, and I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Okay, I this is gonna be a shorter episode because I have um, three more small things to show you, and that's it. I got all this in the mail today, <laughs> so I'm excited. We're gonna open it. Um, the first one, speaking of Twice Your Jeep, is from Twice Your Jeep. I look okay. I'm an affiliate. We know that sometimes I get stuff sent to me, and sometimes I just buy things because I'm fully obsessed. And this was one of those times where I purchased with my own money because I needed these and they were almost out of stock and I was like Ugh, I need them okay um they are little um like lobster clasp stitch markers and I just really needed these charms one of them I have so this one I have this one on one of my row counters. Little shooting star. I love it. This is the one that I absolutely needed. I am in love with this little rainbow flower. It is so cute. And this is the reason why I bought all four of these. <laughs> these are the other two. I think the rainbow is super cute. I think the lollipop is also super cute. But I just really wanted these for my collection. Um, I'm starting to use these like lobster clasps stitch markers more often to mark my progress, especially for the podcast to show like where I was in the last podcast and how much progress I've made. Um, I know some people do this like to show daily progress or weekly progress on their projects and um, it's super fun to like pick a stitch marker progress keeper that you love and have it on your project as you're working on it. So I am going to take my beautiful little rainbow flower. You know, I should have taken a photo of it first, but that's okay. And I am going to put it on my Oslo hat. So we can see the progress next week that I have made. 
And I'm just going to put it literally the last stitch that I did. Oh boy. Sometimes it's just really awkward. <laughs> okay, there we go. So it's right there on the last stitch. And it will stay there. Until next week, and then I'll move it. Unless I'm done with this hat next week, but I don't think I will be. Because... I didn't tell you this. I did make a decision. If you watched last week's podcast, I asked if anyone had any recommendations on whether I should knit all three drop shoulder designs first and then knit the raglans or do one drop shoulder, one raglan and switch back and forth. I had one vote for each. So I just made an executive decision that I'm gonna knit all three drop shoulders first. So, my next project. It's going to be the clove sweater with Explore, um, that's by Rachel Knits Things on Instagram. And I'm going to use Barrel Age Sour by Explore Knits in DK. So, I'm going to start, well, you know what, I'm going to do sweater surgery first. And then, like, as it's blocking and I finish with that, then I'll swatch and get that cast on. So I'm really excited. Why did I say all that? Um, oh, that's why I'm probably not going to finish this Oslo hat because I really want to work on that. So, um, oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. I ordered from Black Pearl Magic. I actually, I feel like I should save this other story for next week. Um, I'm going to save it for next week, I, but uh, Shayla watches the podcast, so hey Shayla! I am so excited about this. Um, I saw this in an email, I was, you know, I'm signed up for emails, and uh, I saw these stitch markers and I was like, I need them. I need them, I need them, and so I ordered them. Look at this cute sticker. Make your own magic. I love that. <gasps> They're so cute! Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this was like a c collaboration with Twin Mountain Handcrafts, because that's what it says on here. But look at these little, little drippy smiley faces. Aren't they so cute? There we go. There's the focus. I thought they were adorable. And I didn't want to pass them up. Um, and I have more coming from Black Pearl Magic. I made another order, but I will tell you that story when it arrives. So, yay! Okay, and last but not least, this is yarn. And I talked about this yarn, I think, on last week's podcast. I ordered this from a stash from Cassandra. Hey, Cassandra! I know she watches sometimes, too. Cassandra is um, Knits with Nimbus on Instagram, and she has a D-Stash account called D-Stash with Nimbus. Today's Wednesday. She said uh, she's posting more stuff to D-Stash today, and I messaged her, and I was like, you're killing me. <laughs> we have very similar tastes in, like, yarn colors, um, so I just know that everything she posts, I'm going to want to buy it, and it's a problem for me. Not for her, for me. <laughs> but anyways, uh, oh my gosh, I just got my first look at this. <gasps> this is so pretty. Oh, there's a little card. Hold on. Thank you. I gotta open the card first. Oh, it's a little, little Becca. so sweet. Man, sometimes I send little like thank yous in my yarn D stash 
but I just use like computer paper or lined paper for my notebook. I should get special cute little cards because this is the cutest thing ever. Okay. I'm feeling this for the first time. Oh my goodness. Okay, I got four skeins. Look at this blue. Guys, I love blue. Yes, this color. This color, I don't know if you can tell. Sometimes this color brings out the blue in my eyes. Sometimes my eyes just look gray, but okay. Anyways, this is Miss Babs. I hear a lot about Miss Babs and I have never held or tried Miss Babs. Um, it says inspired by nature, damask. That must be the like type. So damask fingering yarn. This is 65% cultivated silk, 35% bleached linen. And it's 100 grams, 420 yards. So it's kind of like a light fingering weight. Um, I believe this is the color Barrel, because it's written on here, Barrel, B-E-R-Y-L, and it just says, um, hand wash, dry flat, and it says we recommend alternating skeins and pre-washing high contrast colors as some colors may release excess dye on the first wash. Um, I only have this one color, so I'm not going to be like doing any color work or anything, but this is really nice yarn. Wow, I'm really excited to work with this. I'm going to have to make a tea or something. I don't know, maybe a sweater. This should be enough. Well... I don't know if I really want to make a fingering weight <laughs> full length sweater with this. You know what maybe I could use this for? Is the Outline Raglan by Jessie Made? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Otherwise I might make a tee with this. T-shirt. Tee. It's really pretty though. Cassandra, I love it! I absolutely love it gorgeous it's silk and linen I know I already said that sorry I'm just taking it in I didn't open this before <laughs> I'm just taking it in it's really pretty let's see yeah I it's kind of like right in the middle of these two colors so okay that's it guys um I did do some damage and I ordered from Explorer Knits Fall Tonals. I was hoping they've already been shipped, so I was hoping they would be here by today, but they're not. It's not. It's still in Colorado. So next week, you'll get to see those. Um, and I ordered from Black Pearl Magic, like I said. So next week, hopefully. Maybe not. I don't know if it'll ship that fast. Um, but soon you'll get to see that. And yeah, I mean, that's really it, um, for the knitting portion. Let me see. I'm trying to think. I'm excited for next week's pot because next week we'll have the fully finished Oslo sweater. Uh, we'll have a swatch at least and hopefully cast on the clove sweater. We'll have this fun yarn. It's going to be a great week, okay? <laughs> I'm excited for next week already. Um, but I think that's it for knitting. Um, let's see. Life. What I'm reading, watching, and listening to. Um, I finished. I finished the second Throne of Glass book. And I'm on the third. And I'm excited. This has, like, been... I feel like... I feel like the first two books are really good, but I feel like the series kind of drastically changes in the third book because the storyline is so different with what's happening. We get brand new characters brought in, and I love some of these characters, so... 
Oh, I always forget. I've stopped reading things on my phone Kindle, and I've started reading things on my regular Kindle. So every time I log into my phone Kindle app, the book that I'm reading is not on, is not pulled up. That's a personal problem. Okay, so I'm on book three, which is called Air of Fire. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm excited about it. It's, I, I am, like, so ready to go to bed at, like, 8 p.m. because I can just, like, lay there and read for, you know, an hour to two hours until I get really sleepy and fall asleep. <laughs> um, yes, sometimes I go to sleep at 9 o'clock because sometimes I wake up really early. So, it is what it is. I'm not mad about it. Uh, so that's what I'm reading. Um, what I'm watching, I watched... The new season of Love is Blind over the weekend. I had so many people being like, why haven't you watched it yet in my life? And so I was like, okay, I'll watch it. Um, I was, okay, so like the whole part where they're in the pods is like out and released. Um, and we also saw the first couple days where they're like on their little honeymoon or whatever. Um, they're not in Mexico this year, they're in Malibu, which was really exciting because I'm from, like, the LA area, and so as they were, like, showing the drone shots over Malibu, and they were showing, like, going through the bridge tunnel, or tunnels, um, like, driving through the canyons, I was like, oh, are they in Malibu? Like, I've driven that road, I know where they are. Um, obviously I don't know the, like, house or I don't even it's not a house they're like in a resort or something um but it was exciting to see um anyways the pods were the pods were good the pods were interesting um I can see where all of these couples came from this the teaser trailer for what's coming up ahead looks interesting so Lots of drama to be had. Some people not making it down the aisle that I, like, was not expecting from the pods. But that's how it always is, right? So, good show. Um, yeah, I like Love is Blind. And what else am I watching? Just a lot of knitting podcasts. I love a good knitting podcast. Um, we've been watching Floor is Lava, season three is out. Um, that's a fun family show that we watch. We are watching The Great British Bake Off. Um, oh, we finished The Mole. Did I tell you last week we saw the finale? I don't think so. That was fun. I did not guess correctly who it was, but that also made it fun. And really interesting. Um, great show. You should watch them all. And what I'm listening to. There's only one thing I'm listening to, guys. Taylor Swift Midnight's came out. So I'm just listening to it on repeat. Um, I love it. I love pretty much all of the songs. If there are any songs that I'm skipping, which I haven't yet, um, it's probably uh, Vigilante shit and Labyrinth. But I love it. I love the rest. All of them. If you want to talk about it, let me know. There are so many things. The Taylor Swift conspiracy theories are still all over TikTok. That's pretty much the only content that I get on TikTok now, so I'm fine with it. I love it. <laughs> Um, but that's it guys. A little bit of a shorter episode today. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I really wanted to come on and talk to you about the before of my Oslo sweater so you could get the comparison of the before and after. Um, and yeah, next week is going to be a really good one. So I hope you'll stick around and watch it. Editing Leslie here. Um, I will make this short and sweet. I realized I forgot to give you an update on the Twice Your Cheap Advent Boxes. There are less than 50 of these left and they are going to be shipping out in about a week, week and a half. 
Um, so if you are interested, now is the time to make your purchase. As a reminder, this is an advent calendar countdown box. So there are 25 little boxes in here to open from December 1st through December 25th if you're going to open it the traditional way. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas or you just want to do your own thing, you are more than welcome to open them counting down to whatever special holiday you celebrate or open them all at one time. I won't tell if you won't tell. Um, yeah, I am getting really excited as we're getting closer and closer to December. I know it's still a month away, but every day I look at this and I think we're getting closer. So if you are interested, um, again, I have an affiliate link for Twice Shared Cheap down in the description below. Make sure you click on that when you make your purchase. Anything that you purchase after clicking on that link um, does give me a small commission at no extra cost to you, and I would be eternally grateful. And uh, now I will leave you with this. Do you ever just cut my life into pieces?